Hi everyone. In this particular video, I'm going to be going over OAuth2 user agent flow and explaining and showing how to set this up in Bubble's API connector using the natively supported authentication method. First, I'm going to click this section, add another API, and I'm going to update the API name to Spotify. The reason why is because I'm going to be using Spotify as an example to show you how to set this up. Next, I'm going to go to the authentication and click OAuth2 user agent flow. And all this information will appear, which I need to fill in and, uh, and check. So I'm gonna jump over to the Spotify API documentation and I'm in the authorization section, which really gives me an overview of how to set up or how Spotify implements the OAuth 2.0 authorization framework. The first thing that I wanted was this app ID and app secret. So this section and this section here. If I go to here, I can see this section app settings and I'm gonna click this here. What this shows me, or this section shows me, is how to create, update, and delete a new app, which will provide me with a client ID and client secret, or app ID and app secret. And I need to set this up from my Spotify for Developers dashboard. It goes into a lot of detail here, explaining how to do so. I'm going to jump over to my Spotify for Developers dashboard here. Anyone can log in and sign up to this section and access the dashboard. Now I'm going to create an app and I'm going to call it test bubble Spotify application and just write this is a test as my app description. I'll tick the checkbox and click create. What it now provides me is with a client ID and that's my app ID, which I will copy and paste into these sections. I'll then get my client secret and copy and paste these into these sections. And next, I want the scopes. If you want to have a little bit more of an understanding of what a scope is, I'd recommend reading the written guide attached in the description to this video. If I go back to here, I can see this second section is authorization scopes. If I go through here, the two scopes that I want is the user read email and the user read private. So if I click the user read email, what it provides me with is read access to the user's email address. The reason why I need to provide this is that when I'm going through this particular flow, a user is landing on my application. They're logging in with Spotify, approving my application access to their Spotify data, and then being redirected to my application. And what we can use is we can actually use this login as Spotify as a login to our application, similar to a login with Google or a login with Facebook, which you really commonly see on web applications. So what I want to do is I want to copy this scope and pop this in here. So with this user read email address, when the user logs into Spotify, we can get the, grab that email address and create a new user account on our Bubble data tab. In addition to that, we would probably also want the user's first name and last name so that we could add this to the user account and add to their user profile information. So if I scroll back up, I want to have user read private, which will give me access to this particular information. So let me copy this particular scope and just pop that in here. I'm going to skip over this section for now, and I'm going to go now to the user generic redirect URL, and I'm going to tick this box, and I'm going to copy this section here. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go to the edit settings and add this here. And then I'm going to click save. So if we read the description here, what we can see is that this is just a whitelisted address to redirect to after the authentication success or failure. So after a user has logged into Spotify and it's, it's worked and it's successful, it will redirect them to this particular address and Bubble will read that address and redirect them to the page that they previously were on. Now we're going to go to these sections, which is login, dialogue, redirect, and access token endpoint. If you want to have a little bit more understanding of these, I'd again recommend reading that written guide or even watching video of a manual setup to the OAuth2 user agent flow, which kind of goes into this setup in a little bit more detail. So if I go back to my API documentation here, we can see this section authorization code flow. And what this really goes over is the code flow or the flow that uh, we need to undertake to really set up this authorization framework. So if I scroll down here, I can see this section request user authorization. And I need to send a get request to the authorize endpoint. 
And what I want is I want the URL of this authorized endpoint. And if I scroll down to this code here, I can see it here. And I'm going to copy that. Next, I want the access token endpoint. So let's go back here and scroll further down and I can see request access token. And I can see that I should be doing a post request to the API token endpoint. If I scroll further down, I can get this token endpoint. I'll just copy that. Next, I want the user profile endpoint. So I want to know which what the endpoint I need to hit to get all the user profile information. And if I go to here, I can see this section, get current user's profile. So this is the endpoint, which gives me detailed profile information about the current user. And I can see the URL just here. I'll pop that in. Next, I need the user ID key path and user email path. So Bubbles pre-filled it as email and ID. And I just want to check that that's correct. So let me go back to here. And if I look at email, so yep, yeah, that's the email key and it'll provide me with the user email address. And then I also have ID, which gives me the Spotify user ID. So that is correct. So now let me go back up to the top here and go back to this section, authentication goes in the header. So I want to check how authentication works or how I need to use this access token. So if I go back to here and I scroll to the bottom, I can see learn how to use an access token to fetch track information from Spotify web API in the how to use an access token guide. So what I can see here is that the access token is required to make requests to the Spotify web API. So to do so, you need to add the following header in your API calls, authorization, and then the valid access token in the format of bearer and then access token. So if I go back to here, I can see that authentication for my calls goes in the header and it goes in the, the format of authorization and then bearer. So now this is all set up. And before I can actually make an API call, I need to get an access token so that I can actually use that. So to get my access token and to set this up, I need to test this in run mode. And it, it tells me that to do this here. So you haven't tested the API in run mode or authenticated with Spotify yet. You do need to do this by setting up the calls, test the URLs and the keys. So set up a login workflow, run your app in run mode and authenticate with the service. And once done, your access token will be used to initiate API calls and the API will be marked as valid. So let's go to our design tab. And what I've got here is just a button which has login set up already. What I want to do is I want to start editor workflow. And when button login is clicked, I want to sign up and log in with a social network. And that OAuth provider of API Spotify will now appear. So let's preview this particular page. And what I want to do now is I just want to log in. So you can see here now that I'm on this login page for Spotify. So now I've logged in and I can see that test bubble Spotify application, which is my application here, wants to view my Spotify account at data, particularly my email and the type of sub Spotify subscription you have. So these are actually the scopes that I asked for it and I need to approve this. So I'm going to click approve. So I can see here now that I've successfully initialized the OAuth 2 and I can go back to the editor and keep building. So if I go back to my plugins tab, now I can set up an API call. If I also go to my data tab, I can see that this user account has now been created based off the Spotify information. But let's set up an example API call. I'll expand this out and we'll just make a call to this particular endpoint. Check that it's working. If I initialize the call, I can see that this call has been set up successfully. So this video just really goes over how to set up that OAuth2 user agent flow. If you have any questions or queries or comments that you'd like to provide, please provide them below this video.